Um, all right. Um, we might have a few people jumping on. Thank you uh, for your patience. Oh yeah, so we still have some people jumping on. Um, but in the um, out of respect for everyone's time, we'll get started. Um, and then you know, if people log on a few minutes late, they can just jump in with us um, wherever we're at. So um, I wanted to say welcome and thank you for joining us um, for the Village Learning Places Second Wednesdays program this evening. My name is Melissa. I work at the Village Learning Place. Uh, we are a nonprofit library. For those of you who don't know, we have programs for, we like to say, everyone from ages two to 102. Um, and we are located, our library is located in the Charles Village neighborhood of Baltimore. So this program is our adult cultural program, Second Wednesdays. Um, it's a free monthly series that features lectures and special arts events. Uh, it's coordinated by a very dedicated volunteer committee. Um, so we always like to say thank you to them. It's also possible because generous people like you who appreciate opportunities like this to learn new things and connect with others um, are what sustain our free public programs. So if you would like to make a donation uh, to help support the future of Second Wednesdays, I'll put a direct donation link in the chat box now and at the end of the program. Um, so our Second Wednesdays were previously held in our historic library on St. Paul Street, um, but we're continuing to host them virtually for now, just to protect the health and safety of our presenters, our staff, and our attendees. Um, but I encourage you to visit our website for updates about future presentations, when we might be back in person, um, and for the virtual presentations, our links to watch. And finally, uh, next Wednesday, or next month's Second Wednesdays um, is featuring Sydney Clifton. She is an Emmy nominated producer and a mixed media artist who grew up in Baltimore with her five siblings and her parents. Notably, her mother is the, or what, yes, is the National Book Award winning author and poet Lucille Clifton. Uh, Sydney recently bought her childhood home in Windsor Hills on the west side of Baltimore. And she is converting it into a workshop and retreat space to nurture writers, artists, and creators in Baltimore. So she'll be joining us at 7 p.m. on May 12th to discuss the Clifton House project. But tonight, we are very excited to have with us uh, Sarah Wehner. She is a longtime acupuncturist and now owner of the Maryland Community Acupuncture in Patterson Park. Um, I'll let her tell you all about her background. Um, she's here to share her wealth of knowledge and teach us all some ways to incorporate practices at home that can have us feeling the health benefits of acupuncture. Um, and I know she's happy to answer questions. I just ask if you do have questions, save them either till the end or type them in the chat uh, during the presentation so as to not interrupt her and we'll make sure that all your questions get answered before we sign off tonight. So I know you're all here to hear Sarah talk anyway, so I will pass it over to her. Hi, thank you. Um, so I'm Sarah Wehner. Um, I'm here in the clinic. I'm the owner of Maryland Community Acupuncture. Um, and what I'm hoping tonight is to um, go through together some points that you can do on yourself at home. It's called acupressure to help with anxiety and stress and to also alleviate the spring seasonal allerg allergy symptoms. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I have been practicing acupuncture for over 13 years and I opened Maryland Community Acupuncture um, three years ago. So it's a community clinic, which means that um, you can come more often and get better faster because the price is $30 for intros and 20 for follow-ups. And you're gonna be in like a recliner chair if you were to come. Um, and stay fully dressed and we needle the arms and legs and points on the head. Um, so that gets to what we're getting to tonight, which is I wanna offer um, some information about acupuncture if you have questions, but really some self-care that you guys can do um, either as a ritual, like before you go to bed or in the morning or in an acute situation where you're feeling overwhelmed or you're having a lot of um, sinus and um, allergy symptoms. Um, so if it's okay with everybody, we'll just go ahead and jump right in. Um, we're going to talk about three points that are really helpful for anxiety and stress. And then we're going to talk about, and I'll, we'll walk through it together, how to do acupressure on yourself. Three points that are really helpful for um, sinus congestion um, and allergies. So stress and allergies. And then there's a bonus point that's good for both. Um, which happens a lot. So 
Um, before we get started, I think it would be a great idea to do just a little grounding exercise. So um, I invite everyone to feel yourself in the chair, feel your feet on the ground, maybe close your eyes. And let's breathe together at your own pace. Just take a couple of breaths. Feel yourself sort of settle. Whatever the day brought you, and just put it down for now. Notice your breath. You don't have to make any changes to it. Just be aware of where it is. And then just check in if you notice any tightness or any places that feel like they could use a little relief. And relax into that. Another deep breath in. Great. Tough. Right here. Um, so to start, we'll go through some of the points that help with anxiety and stress. And I will say that before COVID, anxiety and stress was actually the number one thing that people asked for support for in the chair. And since COVID, it is still the number one thing that people ask for support around. Um, and some people deal with sort of like a low grade constant sense of anxiety um, or stress. And sometimes people feel like it comes in, a, in sort of a wave. Um, they'll have like an episode. Um, so regular care, can help to even out the edges. And you can use these points acutely when you're feeling a wave. Um, so we'll start with the first point, which is on the ear. It's called the Shen Men point, And it's basically located in this little triangle right behind the bend of your ear. And these are your points. They're on your body. You have access to them all the time. And stimulating them with acupressure is similar to stimulating them with acupuncture. So all of these pathways, you know, begin and end at the fingers and toes. And it's the chi that moves through the pathways the same way blood moves through blood vessels. And by stimulating the point, either by putting pressure on it or by putting a needle there, we're asking the body to move things more smoothly and we're nudging the body a little bit. And every time you do acupressure or acupuncture, you're moving the body out of the fight or flight response, just like our breath work just a minute ago, into the rest and restore response. And then from that place, the body has an amazing capacity to heal itself. So for the Shen Men point, it's good for sleep, cravings, and anxiety. Shen means spirit, men means point. So it's the spirit point. And what you can do is you can literally just like squeeze your ear between your fingers on both sides. So go ahead and try that. And it's something where you, you're looking at more of a zone. You don't have to be super precise. But what we're doing is we're, we're picking this point that is located just behind the bend of the ear in this little triangle. And we are squeezing the point with our fingers. And maybe do, let's do a three count. So we'll hold it for one, two, three. And just breathe as you do it. And that's really all there is to it. You can rub it, you can squeeze it, and you can press on it. And you can do it as part of a routine, or you can do it when you feel that wave. Um, so the first point is the Shen Men point. Um, the second point that I find to be really helpful is called pericardium six. Um, so all of the pathways, there's 12 major, um, and then there's eight minor, there's points all over the body. Um, but all the pathways have a correspondence to an organ system and to um, like an energy flow. That doesn't really, you don't really need to know about that, um, but you would like to know where the point is. So I'll tell you that. So pericardium six is on the wrist. And it's three kun, which is your fingers, three fingers down from your wrist in the space between the tendons. So if you feel on your arm, you can feel sometimes the tendons are tight together and sometimes the tendons are further apart depending on the person. 
um, but you can feel the space in between the tendons. And again, you're doing like three fingers down. So maybe you're familiar with, um, I think they're called sea cuffs. When you go to Rite Aid before you're going on a, um, a boat trip, you can get these, they're like old school um, sweatbands with like a little knob on them. It's acupressure. It's basically putting pressure on the pericardium point, which it is really helpful for nausea, um, but it is also really helpful for anxiety, anxiety that leads to nausea. Um, and it's a good one because in Chinese medicine, the pericardium is the heart protector. So the imagery is that the heart is the emperor and the pericardium is sort of the guard at the, at the gate. And we have in our, in our body, this like inner emperor, and then there's this outer gate beyond, and that's the pericardium. It protects the heart. So when we're feeling, it's also, it course, it goes, the, the pericardium pathway begins at the finger and it moves up and into the chest. So when your anxious feeling or stress feeling for you maybe shows up in tightness in your chest then this is gonna be a really good point. Um, and again, it's the same thing. So you'll notice what I'm doing is like, I'm squeezing my wrist. You can also put your thumb in the space between and just rub a little bit. It can be as gentle or as firm as it feels good. And just sitting here now too. <laughs> so thinking about helping to open the chest a little bit and a nice reminder that we have a boundary around us that protects us regardless of the situation we're in and maybe the situation is dangerous or maybe it's not maybe it's familiar you know like maybe it's um maybe it's just a that anxious feeling sometimes just comes up as protection, even when we don't need it. So, and sometimes just stress and overwhelm, you know, we get to a point where we're just kind of feeling a little wiped out. This is a good one. So pericardium six. And then on the wrist, the third point that's good for stress and anxiety is heart seven. Um, so similarly, you're going to look and see kind of a crease on your wrist here. And that's where we want to go right to the left. And then up and down, we want to be um, just on the inside of the bone. So the heart pathway runs from the pinky all the way inside. This is more of the yin part of us, the internal part of us. This is the outside. So the heart pericardium runs along the yin part of us and it goes into the heart. So when you're looking for it, you're gonna be on the line up and down and then you're just gonna come in a little bit on the bone. And a lot of times you know that you got it because it feels a little bit more tender than the rest of the body. Um, you kind of poke around and feel like a juicy spot. When we were in acupuncture school, um, that's sort of how we learned to know where the point was. It's a combination of Anatomically, it is one coon, you know, below the wrist and it's on the ulnar side of the, but then you poke at it a little bit and then you can feel it. So it's sort of a, a double whammy. So together we can do this combination and you wanna pick a side, just hold your wrist gently and put your thumb on heart seven. And we'll take a couple of breaths together. And then in your own time, let's move to the other side. So again, we're on the line of the wrist and we're coming just inside the ulnar bone. And we're just poking around until we find a spot that maybe feels a little bit tender and whole. Or just trust that it's there. 
know that it's a zone, so you have a lot of wiggle room. And then put a little pressure on it. So when we do that, we are triggering the body to come out of fight or flight and to rest and digest. So maybe feeling gently, feeling a little bit more present. And then we're also telling the body specifically that we would like a little bit of nourishment and, and um, release in the chest and the heart area. So those are the points that help with stress and anxiety. And again, think about it like if you have a morning ritual or a night ritual where you wash your face and you drink a glass of water and you turn on your alarm for the next day. And then while you're in bed, give yourself some time with these points. Or if you find yourself overwhelmed in a situation kind of out in the world, um, then you can these are yours to access whenever you need them. So those are the points for anxiety and stress. I um, hope that was helpful. Um, the next series of points we're gonna do together are helpful for allergies. So acupuncture, um, this time of year, is a really common time for people to be coming in um, with allergies and acupuncture can be very helpful. Um, so a lot of times what people are experiencing in Chinese medicine, the idea is that, um, you know, the body is reacting as though there is a pathogen. So for some reason, our body is registering cherry blossom pollen as a, an external offender. And so it's kicking on the, um, the immune response. And so a lot of people feel um, dry or itchy eyes, or they might feel um, like sinus pressure, so congestion that can turn into a headache. And the sinuses are all over the, um, all in the head in different places. They're not just on the nose. Um, so it might turn into a headache or more frequent migraines. Um, and then it might be sneezing and occasionally there's like more mucus. So runny nose or just blocked, um, and it can be worse at night. Um, so people have kind of their own sort of pattern that they notice with their allergies. So you will be maybe surprised or not surprised, sorry, that a lot of the points that we think to touch are the, actually the ones that we would recommend with acupuncture. So there's two really great points on the face that are going to open things up. And then there's one actually on the leg, which goes to sort of the theory and um, the question I get a lot around community acupuncture, which is, how are you able to treat my back? How are you able to treat my stomach? You know, I have digestive issues. Do you need to get to my belly? And because all the pathways begin and end at the fingers and toes, we can treat shoulder pain and neck pain and back pain with the points on the arms and legs. Because one, the needles are, you know, turning the body from fight or flight to rest and restore and giving it that clue that these 20 minutes while this person's resting, they can go ahead and put everything down and work on feeling better, getting the body systems in, in, in check. Um, but also there are just time-tested points the one on the leg that we're gonna do is um, time tested to be good at clearing mucus and um, balancing the fluid. So helping to bring moisture to the eyes and bring mucus from the nose. So um, I guess we'll start with that one and then we'll move to the face. So it is also three kun and it's on the leg. So I'll just stand up so you guys can see me. This one's called spleen six. And it's basically, so your ankle bone on the inside is here. You're gonna put three fingers on the ankle bone and just where the fingers end, that's where the point is. So I hope you guys can see me okay. 
Um, and same thing, it's sort of like it's in the middle of the side of your leg, right to left, and then up and down, it's three up. And again, we're looking at a zone, so you don't have to be super precise. Um, when you're doing pressure, you're looking at like the precision of a thumb. When you're doing puncture, you're looking at the precision of a tiny flexible needle. So um, when you're doing it at home, you don't have to be, just don't stress out about getting it perfect is what I'm trying to say. So um, similarly, it might feel a little bit juicy. Like sometimes when the needle goes in, you feel nothing. Sometimes it pinches a little and then it stops. Sometimes it is more dynamic or more pinchy um, in a place that needs it more. So it's kind of like there's something there to move. We're asking the body to move things, to move and restore. So I don't know if this is helpful, but um, same thing. You're kind of gonna put a little pressure on it. You could do it in the morning when you wake up before you get out of bed. This one is great for, this is like, the, it's known as the chi builder. That's its job is to like restore. Um, it's a master point that's used all the time. There was a um, famous acupuncturist, Miriam Lee, who used 10 points on everybody all the time and got amazing results. And it's one of those 10 master points that does, it sounds too good to be true, True, but a lot of acupuncture points have multiple functions. Um, so it's gonna kind of, you know, when you're worn down, it's a good one to kind of build up chi or energy, but it's also gonna be regulating all that mucus and phlegm. Um, and you can do that on both sides. And you can take as long or as short as you want on your own. You don't need to um, you know, move quickly if, if you find that it's particularly, it feels good or it's particularly juicy. You can use them kind of throughout the day or again, you know, it's part of a routine to throw it into the mix. Um, okay, so the next one I want to talk about, there's two on the face. So I'm going to get real close. I hope you guys are cool with that. Um, we are looking at, let's start with the one on the cheek. So this point here is called stomach three. So the stomach meridian starts just in the eye socket and it moves down the face onto the chest and down to the legs. And the stomach is, um, again, in Chinese medicine, just disregard what you think of, but, um, it helps with digestion, but it also is going to be a clearing to the exterior. It's going to, we're going to be kind of like draining um, with the stomach point and conveniently it's right where you're going to feel congestion. So it's a double, double. So a lot of these, there's points that um, I find to be really helpful because of their location and points to be very helpful because of the function. And sometimes both things happen at the same time. And this is one of those. So the stomach three points. So you're basically going like the iris of your eye, like the center of your eye, you're gonna go down from there and you're kinda, of, you can feel your cheekbone here. It goes all the way out and then it comes all the way back in and you're just below the cheekbone. So in the juicy part down here and you're kinda of in the apple of your eye. I'm sorry, the apple of your cheek. And if you're feeling congestion and pressure here, this you're gonna notice this point big time because what it's doing is it's opening that up and then letting it go. And these will turn your face red, so be careful when you decide you wanna do it. Might be a good one to do at night. So same thing, we're just kinda holding it and breathing, feeling ourselves grounded in the space. And just pressure can be enough. The, the skin of the face can be a little sensitive, so you might not necessarily want to be rubbing, but do what feels right, because depending on how congested you're feeling, this could be pretty nice. So stomach three, acupressure, helps with clearing mucus, 
bringing energy to the face, which is going to help with sneezing and, um, you know, itchy dry eyes. Um, but this one is particularly good for congestion in the nose, runny nose and like blocked sinuses that happens a lot with allergies. So the third point that we're going to do together that is a good acupressure point to do for um, allergies and sinus congestion is called bladder two and it's on the eyebrow. So the bladder meridian begins at the corners of the eyes and it runs up the top of the head and zigzags onto the back and down to the pinky toe. So there's points all along that pathway that have multiple functions and the points on the eyebrow are going to be drawing attention to dryness and itchiness in the eyes and then also releasing to the exterior. So they're yang pathways that help to release clear things out. Whereas like the, um, the spleen point is a yin point that helps to build and restore. So basically you're just right on the inside of your eyebrow and you'll notice there's like a little hole under there. Um, and you can do them both at the same time. And so this is where the instinct is, right? Like when your eyes are itchy, you want to touch your face and like put some pressure on it to release it. And there's science to it. The acupuncture points that they've tracked over thousands of years, the ones that you keep going to because you think, God, that would feel good to release this are the same ones that we use. So Again, we're at the beginning of the eyebrow, up and down, we're on the eyebrow, out from the center. And you know, there's the, the bone arch here on the inside. And if you kind of feel around a little bit, you might feel, when I say a hole, I mean like there's, um, there's like the edge of a circle and you feel like an emptiness underneath. Or you don't feel that and you're just pressing the beginning of the eyebrow. And that's going to create some real release. And sometimes it's, you know, to do with, it's sort of a, it can be sort of a spiral. So the pollen is creating like an itchiness that's creating irritation, which is creating sort of like a, a tension there. And then the tension is building on the itchiness. Um, so depending on what your symptoms are, you can kind of pick what points make sense for you. Um, and then the last one, which is the bonus point, is good for both stress and anxiety, and it also helps a lot with, um, with sinus congestion, um, itchy eyes, runny nose, allergy stuff. And some people deal with allergies all year long. Um, Maryland has a terrible reputation for allergy season. Springtime can be really challenging. Um, so a lot of people think to come to acupuncture sort of like for a couple of visits before the season starts and then through the season, some people come like when things are pretty bad. Some people come regularly to keep maintaining. Um, everybody's different. Some people come to acupuncture and they get their results and they go away and they don't come back or they come back when it flares up again. And other people find it, uh, myself particularly, to be kind of a resource to have to like to balance all the time. So I came to acupuncture as a patient and I found it to be super duper helpful, but also really an easy way to feel better because basically as a patient, I showed up, I relaxed, took a little nap. And then when I left, I felt better. And then the accumulation of the treatment, because acupuncture has a cumulative effect, meant that like a month in, I felt way better. And then I forgot how bad I was feeling <laughs> because it's gradual. Um, some people have dramatic experiences for most people. It's a gradual accumulation where like the intensity and the frequency of something really starts to turn down. Um, so our bonus point is called yin tan. It's called the point with no name. It's in the space where two pathways meet. And it is, I think of it as, um, like the point that turns your brain off. So the point with no name, meaning it doesn't matter what the name is, you're not thinking about anything. Um, and I love that. I, it helps me um, think about, you know, it helps me to bring, it's like the name helps to bring the spirit to it. So um, this one is right between the eyebrows. 
So we were just here on either side and now we're just coming to the center and then up and down, um, you know, down from the forehead, up from the nose, literally in the center point right here. Like if you were pushing your glasses up, you'd be right there. And this one's nice to rub instead of press, but feel it out for yourself. I really encourage you, this is part of why I wanted to be able to offer this to you guys. I really encourage you to get comfortable with these points because they're yours and you can, you know, use them when you need them, particularly for something where you're feeling like things are keyed up and more intense and need a little extra help. You can do this on your own. And this one's a good one to just close your eyes. Give ourselves a little time with the yin tan point. Great. So in addition to being helpful at calming the mind, it also opens the face. So because it's a pathway that meets where two meridians begin and end, so the gallbladder, or I'm sorry, the governor vessel begins here and goes back, the con, um, conception vessel begins here and goes down. So it's like a dynamic space where when you go to it, it's going to open up and down and then move things in the face. And we're doing two things. We're kind of like giving the body a nudge to say, you know, I want you to balance things out, even things out, come into some homeostasis. Um, and we're also saying like, hey, do you remember this point? Can you bring a little bit of focus and energy to this point so the body can, um, you know, we, we're, we're drawing attention to it so the body can balance itself and focus on it. Um, so it's both, which again, it's like, it's just perfect medicine, you guys, but it's, it's both um, a general thing where we're giving the body acupuncture giving the body acupressure and it's taking that as a cue to come into it ourselves, be in our bodies, feel our breath and then be present, um, which has its own, you know, taking a nap, coming into like some restfulness and stillness. Um, it kind of moves things in a different direction, but then also being very super precise to say, um, you know, we're on this pathway, we're not on this pathway. And so we are targeting. So when, when people come in for acupuncture, they have some goals that they want to meet. And I'm both putting in tr um, a series of points that are going to help them to generally feel better. And then I'm also being very specific about what they want to see change. So um, hopefully that was helpful. Um, just a little, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And so I want you guys to know that um, these are just some resources that you can use. You don't have to do it perfectly to get success. Um, acupuncture is very forgiving medicine. Um, and then to think about, you know, like both using it when you need it and trying to get ahead of it with like just incorporating, maybe pick a point this week that jives with where you're at in your life. If it's, dry eyes or feeling overwhelmed more often than normal. I think for a lot of us, whatever we were already managing, um, you know, we, we manage our stress, how we manage our stress. And we have, you know, these tools in our tool belt. And I think that for a lot of people, whatever we were already managing um, was enough, you know, challenges with work or finances or relationships. Um, and then the tools that we had in our tool belt for a lot of people kind of when everything closes down, it's harder to get to. Um, and I just think that having a few more tools in the tool belt um, can help us, you know, feel a little bit more even like we're not, it's not getting ahead of us. We're like feeling a little more like we have support when we need it. Um, so let's do a little check-in. Uh, we're going to feel our feet on the ground and feel our bodies in the chair and let our eyes close if that's comfortable. 
take a couple of breaths, just noticing where you're at. Maybe you're feeling your face <laughs> if you weren't before. Um, maybe things are a little softer or you're just aware now of a place where you could, you could use a little touch and attention. Let's do three deep breaths together. Great. We'll slowly open your eyes and come back to us. Um, and there we are. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about what we just did or about acupuncture in general or about um, the clinic specifically. So um, yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, so um, I'll just say, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask a question, you can do that. Or if you're having trouble doing that, you can type it, try and type it in the chat and I can monitor. I have a question. Um, is it possible for you to write them down by any chance? I mean, like there's two different groups that you just talked about so that it might be um, a little easier to to kind of follow once I'm away from here? Absolutely. Um, I don't know, Melissa, what the best way is, but I could definitely send some pictures of the points um, and just a reminder of what, what they're helpful with. If that That'd comes be great. Mind. Yeah, this is all, that would be great. Cause I had trouble seeing, like when you were on the ankle, I had oh, yeah. trouble seeing where, you, you know, it all looked like one leg. I couldn't see the ankle, <laughs> you know? So I couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> Do that one if anyone else has that same question i'm not sure i'm seeing my name which is probably not helpful but maybe if i tilt down a little bit specifically okay. to get to it but i again i can also i'm happy to take a picture and share it um okay, so what's cool, about, what's cool about about kun is that it's your fingers so everybody has their own measurement so we're talking about three which is the same thing we did for the wrist it's three from the um, ankle bone. So my ankle bone, you know, you have a prominence here. So you're putting the fingers on the bone and then just up from that is where you're gonna find, this is called spleen six. It's that master point I was talking about that's really good for um, building chi, but also clearing mucus all over the body and specifically on the face. Oh, let me tilt back up. But yeah, I'd be happy. It feels it tender. Some... Should it feel tender? Is that is that when you know you've got it, if it's a little tender? It doesn't have to feel tender to be the right spot, okay. but often tenderness and like the, what I was describing as like a hole, yeah. like um, a part that feels different to your finger um, are indications that you're in the right spot. Okay. But what's nice is you can just go with the anatomy. When I was first in school, um, I was following the anatomy and trusting I was there until I was feeling more confident that um, I could feel it as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, the pictures would be great. That would be wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to put this in the chat. Um, the You can put your email um, in the chat and you'll get a direct email with resources once Sarah gets them to me, or you can check our second Wednesday's program page and we'll post the resources there. The link is there as well. Our website is just villagelearningplace.org. And then if you navigate to programs and second Wednesdays, we've done that before um, and we'll just leave, we'll, there'll be a link up there um, to the digital resources that Sarah sends us. So, great. Are there any other specific points I can review while we, while the conversation's open or any other, sorry, any other questions? I had a question about for the, the anxiety. So the track of like going from, you were focusing on this, your heart, so you're on your left side and you're talking about how it connects with the heart. Does it also, can you do the same thing on the right side 
in terms of relieving anxiety? Or does it connect to the same, is this the same channel or should you specifically be doing it on your left side? Oh, thank you. That's a good question. Um, no, you don't have to specifically do one side or the other. All the pathways are mirrors. So the heart seven exists on both wrists and it goes to the heart from both sides. So you don't have to do, um, I was just using that as an example, but um, like with the bladder point on the eye, it's a good idea to, to go to both sides um, when you're doing it. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Any other questions? You guys feeling pretty good? Um, does anybody here think you'll be, is there a point that you were curious, think that resonated that you think maybe you'll be trying this week? I will say that I started getting a lot of mucus, like <laughs> I already was like, all right, so I'm starting to feel movement up here. Um, so I will say that my allergies haven't been as bad this year, probably because I'm not outside quite as much as usual, but um, I definitely felt that and I was like, all right, that's a nice bedtime. Nice <laughs> <practice>. Yeah, <laughs> Keep that to the nighttime. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm noticing that for a lot of people, it's not as intense also because most of us are wearing a mask when we're outside or just in general. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing clients with allergies, um, but I'm seeing more where it's like in the eyes than it is where they normally have it as congestion. Um, and any movement is a good sign. That's what I tell people all the time with acupuncture, which kind of goes to like, should it hurt to work? You know, like, does it have to be tender? And that's how I know it's right. No movement is also a good sign, but we're asking the body to, um, you know, to kind of move things around. So you might notice that it's, it gets more intense um, as it's clearing is kind of a way to think of it, particularly with blocked <laughs> sinus stuff that like congested sort of feeling and then pressure as well that might like turn into a headache or a migraine. Yeah. So I kind of see waves in the clinic of different symptoms um, that come up you know, like back pain when people are shoveling snow more or allergies in the spring and fall, um, trouble with sleep in the summertime. Um, you know, I kind of see like, it's interesting to notice that a lot of times like things are, ex a lot of people are experiencing the same thing at the same time. And stress and anxiety has definitely kicked up in the last year as we're all kind of adjusting to a, a, any level of new normal and new amount of having to pay attention to things that you didn't have to pay attention to before. And then just that, you know, whatever those coping mechanisms that we have, like maybe it's just wandering around a target or maybe it's seeing a friend or maybe it's going out to dinner, you know, those things that you don't even think of as therapeutic or helpful kind of went away for a lot of people. And so it's a great time to add just a little extra support when more is going on you might need a little extra support um so like people that come in when their allergies are bad and then when their allergies you know when allergy season is over then you don't see them until the next year so that's always an option but um yeah and so it's like acupressure to acupuncture is a spectrum all of the pathways are yours they're on your body you always have access to them acupressure is stimulating them in an effective way. Acupuncture is sort of a more intense, effective, more uh, precise way. Um, but there, you know, there, there's, there's always points that you can, you know, press on yourself. And I just, myself, just sitting, you know, doing that check-in with the breath before we started and at the end, um, you know, it's just always a good reminder. It feels sometimes like, oh, it's been so many weeks, um, but sometimes it makes a really big difference to just sit still and take a couple of breaths. It also stimulates the body's um, parasympathetic nervous system versus our sympathetic nervous system, which is like, am I okay? Parasympathetic is like, I could, I could eat, I might go to sleep, I feel pretty good. You know, it's like the restore, more restorative part of us. 
um, and the breath, because the breath comes down to this place, that's what it does. So, any questions about community acupuncture or acupuncture specifically? Um, I had a private practice when I first started school, and um, then I worked for a couple of people doing community acupuncture, and then I finally opened my own shop. And I came to acupuncture, I kind of mentioned it's a patient, and I found it to be really helpful because it was partially because it, it turned my brain off. I wasn't having to engage, I just showed up and then I felt better. Um, and then because it had that kind of accumulative effect. And I decided to go into community acupuncture because it's the easiest kind of acupuncture and acupuncture is easy. So it's the most accessible form of acupuncture because um, a couple of things, it's affordable, but also it's convenient. And also you can bring a buddy if you're nervous and you can watch them get acupuncture and then you can go, oh, that wasn't that bad. And um, you can stay fully dressed. You know what to expect. Um, you get to sit in one of these super duper sweet recliner chairs. So I feel like there's a lot of different ways where um, it just makes it you know, more possible for people to get the benefit of acupuncture, which is the whole reason that I decided to do this in the first place. So um, that's just a little about you know, what motivates me and where I came from with it. But this was really good. I hope you guys found something, just anything, sometimes um, something unexpected, but you found something useful. I have one more question. Yeah, sure. Um, out of all the points that you did for um, uh, de-stressing, what would you say is the one, like, let's say you, you really find yourself and maybe it's a, a you know, um, that fight or flight just hits you out of nowhere. Which one would you go to for really a whole, you know, like a bam, the best one? I think it's personal, so it would take trying. Um, I know that for me, this pericardium one is, it's more tender for me than the heart and squeezing it feels reassuring. And I think that fight or flight, sometimes it's like, there's a blur of like, what's me, what's something else, the out of control feeling. And it physically, because I know this is the, the emperor's guard, like, mm -hmm. I know that this, I'm reminded that I'm doing this because I have a boundary and I'm okay. And you don't have to be in all that head stuff with it. It's just, for me, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something. I can really feel this one. But I would say, check with yourself because it might, it might be the heart um, closer up on the wrist or it might, it might be that touching your ears brings everything down. Okay. So, Thanks. That's why I wanted to offer a couple. Oh, and Yin Tan was the bonus point we talked about, which both opens the face and also calms the mind. That's okay. I like that one. Effect can kind of, it forces you to be right here instead of wherever, you know, things are spinning. But this one's okay, really thank cool. you. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, um, I mean, I don't know, Melissa, unless there's any other any questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, chime in if there's any other questions, but I think um, everyone had a chance and it, yeah, it looks like everyone who wanted to put their email um, in the chat, everyone else, make sure you check online if you're interested. Um, I will remind you that next month we'll be talking about the Clifton House, which is an upcoming artist retreat and workspace. Um, but I personally feel a lot more relaxed and centered than I did at the beginning of this presentation. So I want to say thank you so much, um, Sarah, for joining us. Um, and thank you, everyone else um, who came. I hope you got as much as I did out of this. Um, but yeah, we're just happy to be able to connect um, even virtually. And um, this was such a great learning experience. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate you being here. Of course. And everyone go check out Maryland Community Acupuncture. Yeah. I'll, if it's okay, I have a, um, a coupon I can pop into the email when you send it out. 
but I'll also do just a summary of the points that we talked about and their function, if that's helpful. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. So yeah, um, look out for a coupon <laughs> um, to get um, an even better deal on acupuncture, which is already a great deal at Maryland Community Acupuncture. But yeah, thank you everyone. <laughs> and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. So much. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. You can try to get all this email. All right. And Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thank you. I want to give everyone a chance to type their email. I'm a slow typer, so <laughs> I don't want to rush anyone. Thank you. All right, I'm going to end the meeting um, and I'll, we'll touch base via email. Yeah, perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah.